Hey guys, Wayback Rewind here. Today I want to talk about JVC's Mini DV camcorder, GR DV M5. I've got two of them here. And JVC, although they were committed to Super VHS and Compact Super VHS, they also made Mini DV camcorders. I've got two of them here. I just got one, actually, very recently. And I'll explain why coming up next here on Wayback Rewind. Okay, welcome back. Let's get started. So I've got two of these GR DV M5s. The one on the right here I've had for well over 10 years. The one on the left I just bought. And you're wondering, why did I just buy this camera? And the thing is, I like to have a working version of these cameras. And the one on the right that I've had for a long time, it still works. There's no issue with it. The problem I had is with the battery. It turns out this battery is very, very difficult to find. I, I went online to purchase this battery three different times and I failed all three times. The first two, they sent me nothing and I had to cancel my order. The third time they sent me the expanded battery, which unfortunately I was unable to use with this camera because I didn't have the external battery holder. And believe it or not, the only reason I bought the second camera was to get the external battery holder and the battery itself. So it turns out that was the only way I was able to find a working copy of this battery was to buy an entire setup that you see here. But I did get an oversized battery and I got the external battery holder. I also got the battery simulator, which allows me to power the camera uh, through the adapter. It also came with remote and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I think I got a good deal. This camera itself works as well. I did discover a flaw with the zoom motor is not functional, but the camera does record in playback. And I got a, another dock. So it was a, a fairly good trade to buy a whole second set of camera and get all these cool accoutrements along with it. So this is the battery I had with my original. You see, I, I kind of have to mark them so I keep up with the status on them. And it's, as you can see, it's labeled dead. I tried charging it with an external charger, but that didn't work either. So I basically have a camcorder that I was not able to use portably until I came up with a battery. So one of the interesting things about the GRDV M5 is that it holds the battery internal. Now, this is probably one of the last camcorders that had the battery internal. Most camcorders that came later had the battery external, and there's a good reason why. You compare this to the Sony DCR PC5, which is pretty much from the same era, from around 1999. The cameras themselves are about the same size. This one is bigger because it has this empty compartment down here that holds the battery, if you can see that. The cameras themselves are roughly about the same size, but this one has a much smaller battery, which actually has more energy in it. I think, I don't know if it's because it's a newer replacement battery that just happens to have more energy, because there are no new replacement batteries for this one on the right. But this battery, this tiny battery on the Sony actually has twice the energy of this one. But I'm not here to talk about the Sony. I'm here to talk about the JVC. For some reason that I don't completely understand, they came up with this docking station. This is probably one of the last camcorders to have a docking station. But the camera itself does have a microphone jack and headphone jack, which doubles as an AV out, and it has the Firewire DV in and out. So it has jacks on it. For some reason, it has this little proprietary connection on the bottom. The camera goes into the dock, and then you press lock, and the camera's locked in place. So the interesting thing about this dock is it does several different things. So the dock has connections for audio and video out, S video out, it has an edit plug and a JLIP remote control basically. Dock will charge batteries like this. You can see it's now charging. The dock will also charge the battery when it's in the camera when you put it in the dock. 
So if I put the battery into the camera like this, close it up. So I have to put the camera into the dock, slide it forward, and then lock it in place. Now you can see that the camera is charging and I can also, at this point, power the camera up. I'm gonna go into play. Now remember, this is a 1999 camera. This is not a touchscreen, so I have all of these transport buttons down here. So this camera does work perfectly. So one of the things about this camera you'll notice is it has the old style rotary, reminiscent of the type of rotary switches that you would see on still cameras of that era. They carried over into camcorders for a long time. Video cameras today no longer have these. You will see separate buttons for play and record. These old school cameras you had auto mode, manual mode, five second and this time self timer but depending on which mode you had it in you know you can put this camera in auto mode and just shoot all day without having to worry about anything so this camera the downside to this is it won't charge the battery and operate the camera at the same time even if I put a, another battery here that battery will not charge as long as the camera is on. But as soon as I turn the camera off, you can see I've actually got two chargers going here, which is kind of neat. It's charging this battery, and it's also charging the battery that's in the camera. So the dock is kind of a neat feature. I'll use the second camera over here to demonstrate why I wanted that external battery holder. Let me move that off to the side a little bit. Assuming the only battery I have is the oversized battery, there's no way in the world that this battery is gonna fit in there. So what JVC did is they came up with this concept of the battery holder. This battery holder originally came with the camera in a kit. Today, they are virtually impossible to find, which is why I ended up buying a whole separate camera just to get this battery holder. So the way the battery holder works is you put, put it on the bottom of the camera and then lock it into place. Now that's firmly attached. And then I can take a battery and put it in here like that and lock it into position. And there's actually even a lever here that will make sure that this won't come off. Now at this point, I've got a relatively bulky looking thing. And the, the odd part is this battery compartment can still be empty but now I have an oversized battery a battery holder an empty compartment and a camera so if you compare this to the camera by itself it's a lot bigger and if you compare it to say the equivalent Sony camera of the era it's you know kind of comically larger so all that being said it does allow me to use this camera with oversized batteries which are still readily available online to buy versus the normal size battery which the only example I had before was dead I was not able to use this camera at all other than having it in the dock and carrying it around inside the dock and trying to record is relatively impractical so now at least this allows you to, to leave the house with this camera and use it. So that's a good thing. If you have an internal battery installed, it will actually use both of those batteries. The big battery has over twice the power of the small battery. So with this setup, you have about three times the battery power. And if you remember what it was like back in the turn of the century, battery power was a huge issue. You, know, you always ran out of battery power. But if you have an internal battery installed, you can hot swap out the external battery and vice versa. Because you can still access this battery compartment 
and if I had a good battery here, I can install it. So I have a good battery here. I'm gonna install the good battery into the compartment. Now you can see my camera is powered up. I can un unlock the external battery. You see now I can, I can remove this battery completely. I'm still running off the internal battery. I can hot swap this one on, lock it in place. Now I can remove the internal battery. You see I'm still recording. So this gives me the ability to run continuously off either battery while I could use that second dock or both docks for that matter to charge batteries and be able to, to go indefinitely with this setup as bulky as it may appear. This battery does have a flat bottom. The camera is able to balance by itself. Now the downside is you do lose access to the tripod mount here. So there is no easy way to mount this to a tripod. So let's put a tape in here and show you how this works. Now, one thing that I would recommend doing is if you're, if you're planning to put this in the cradle, it's probably best to put this handle over on the, on the other side so that you can open and close this door easier. And if you're using this in the portable mode, you, you kind of want that strap on this side in order to hold it. Now, how you open the door is a little tricky. You have to pull this down and get it out of the way and then try to manipulate that lever and so it's a little tricky but it's not impossible and then you let this close up by itself you know, the one thing about these rotary knobs is kind of annoying is that when you put in a tape like this you have to go back to play mode see where you are make sure you're not about to record over something that's important to you I'm not really sure what's on this tape. I think I was just playing around with some other camera. When you're ready to go, I'm gonna put it in auto here. So it's in auto. Showing pause, which is always good. Means it's ready to go. When I hit record, it says record. It's showing the tape advance. One of the things I keep forgetting on this camera is that in order to get the menu to display, you have to press this button, but it only works in manual mode. If you're in auto mode, the menu won't even show up. It's not a touch screen, so you have to use this rotary. You get to the thing you like, then you press it. Zoom is at 10x. Let me go to 40x. So also, when I'm in manual mode, I can hit the menu to call up the system menu. But if I just press the wheel, I will get the very convenient option to do manual focus, manual exposure, manual white balance, and a couple of special effects. So obviously, if I want manual focus, I go to manual, it uses this rotary knob as my focus. I press it again, I go to exposure, press it, go to manual, now when I, now my little rotary knob is doing exposure. So wipes, it has a bunch of old school wipes on here, which I would never use today, but you know, you could do like shutter, scroll, doors, slides, random. I would never use any of these today. They're, they're way too old school. I'm just gonna record something real quick, play it back just to demonstrate that this camera does in fact work. So, so I'm going to record its stable mate here, the GR SXM 930, record that. Get to stop it with this. Then go to play, rewind, stop, play. So it is playing. The timer is really showing me battery. It does have time code. Well, that's not very useful. Record something these real days. quick. Play it back just to demonstrate that this camera does, in fact, work. So I'm going to record its stable mate here the GR SXM930. OK, 
Okay, you get the idea. It works. So there you have it. The JVC GRDV M5. By 1999 standards, this actually was a relatively compact camera. At least it was. If you, if you didn't have this external deal, it's not bad. And you could always put this on just temporarily, charge the internal battery, and then take it off again. So that's kind of a hokey thing, but it is very practical. In reality, it is practical. Glad I have it versus not having it. But you can see you can hot mate that and hot demate it and still have internal power. I'm showing like three bars on the internal battery. So it is a useful feature to have this. Having one dead battery is not very helpful. Having two batteries is pretty useful. So there you have it, the JVC GRDV M5. As always, please like or subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.